My name is Paul Wolliver. I'm the owner of Manelis Power Products. And this is the installation instruction video for generators that use the Ducar 224cc engine. That would include the Westinghouse iGen 4500, the Cummins Onan P4500i, and the Pulsar 4000. Again, don't let the, uh, the generator model concern you because this is a fuel kit and it pertains to the engine itself and all three of them use the Ducar 224cc engine. For the purpose of this video, I will be shooting it, installing it on a Westinghouse iGen 4500. The only difference is the color. Of course, the Pulsar is white, the Onan is Onan green, and the Westinghouse is Westinghouse blue. <coughs> Installation procedure is fairly straightforward and simple. You'll pull this cover off and it is held on with four of these screws. They're a six millimeter thread, one millimeter pitch with a slight shoulder on it. If you have any questions about the install or anything else, you can contact me at my website. There is a link just below the video if you're on YouTube, and it'll take you to my website. The fifth bolt has a 10 millimeter head on it, a longer shoulder, and still a six by one threaded section. I recommend that you put the bolts for each cover in a specific place because you're going to be pulling several covers off and it just makes it easier to keep track of it. So this is the first cover. front cover is held on by eight of these screws. They are slightly smaller head than the ones that are on the side cover. They're a six by one pitch, but there's eight of those on the front panel. The front panel, we're not going to be pulling way off. We're just going to pull it out far enough so that we can get the side panels off and it's held on by the wiring and by the fuel hose.
I noticed this screw felt a little funny coming out. So when we go to put it back in, we'll have to make sure that there's no burrs on the threads or anything like that. Okay, so the back panel is held on by five of these screws that are visible. And then there are two more hidden screws, one under each one of these black rubber plugs. The screws that are hidden under those plugs are identical to the first five, also to the eight screws on the front cover. There are three small rubber plugs in the top of the generator on this side that will need to come out in order to pull this side cover off the generator. So here's the three rubber plugs. Then there are bolts that go into the end of the handle. The head of each bolt is a 10 millimeter. And this bolt felt just a little funny coming out. I could add some debris on the threads as well. Three bottom screws on this panel have a 10 millimeter head on them, a shoulder, and then a 6x1 metric thread. Incidentally, the bolts on this side are identical to the ones on the other side of the handle. They're an 8 by 1.25 pitch thread, 10 millimeter head, chrome plated.
this one felt a little funny. You can see there's a little bit of a burr on this bolt. <clears throat> four of these shouldered bolts at the bottom. bolts look the same as the shoulder bolts that are bottom of the other side. 10 millimeter head, a shoulder, and a 6x1 threaded portion. You'll also have three rubber plugs on this side. The center one, you unsnap the, uh, the fuel shield. Incidentally, if you accidentally lose one of these rubber plugs, if you're going to skip one, this would be the one because it's covered. So if you lose one, nobody will ever know if it's the one that goes under there. <clears throat> These are the same as the ones that went on the top of the other side. Mm -hmm. Just pull the starter rope out. That's the door for the oil cover. This panel can just hang right here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is mount the fuel pump. You get a bag of small parts included in the kit. One of the parts is a flash drive with a high resolution copy of the video that you're watching right now. The fuel pump is going to go on the back side of this little bracket that comes down. And it'll be mounted so that you've got one barb coming down and the pulse port and the output port coming backward. So we'll put the bolt in. Then the washer and then the nylock nut. You'll install the fuel pump so that the one hose barb goes almost directly down, the other two hose barbs go almost directly back. Then we'll remove the breather hose. This end simply slides onto the spigot. The valve cover end has a Corbin clamp. You'll squeeze the two tabs on the Corbin clamp and slide it off the valve cover. The 
valve cover is held on by four bolts. We're taking the valve cover off so that we can disable the PCV valve. My kit comes with a new PCV valve that goes external to the engine. Disabling this PCV valve is very simple. It's just a reed valve, a metal reed, and then there's a rubber seal. So all we're going to do is push in on the side of the rubber seal and then lift the seal out. As you can see there's a groove in it and the metal plate went right through this groove. So you'll pull this out you will not be reinstalling that. So now you can see that the reed valve does not touch this metal plate so now this reed valve is ineffective. My kits are going to come with a tube of Permatex Ultra Black PVC or um, gasket sealer. Um, if you tear the gasket, you'll definitely need some gasket sealant on it. If you do not tear the gasket and the gasket looks like it's in really good shape, then you can go ahead and reuse it without it. Um, you'll notice that this one here does not line up correctly, so that's going to cause us a little bit of trouble putting the uh, bolts back in because somebody was in a little bit of a hurry when they assembled the generator at the factory. I'm going to put a little bit of the gasket sealer on it. Uh, a mistake that most people make when doing the gasket sealant is they use too much gasket sealer. Just poking through the metal. Get a different screwdriver to do that with.
the next step. Make sure that the fuel selector valve is in the off position. We're going to remove the hose that runs from the fuel selector valve to the carburetor. And that would be this one right back here. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Okay, good. And that hose is held on with a Corbin clamp. You simply squeeze the two ears and wiggle it out of the way. The hose is a 3 16 inside diameter. Be very careful when you're working it off of the fuel selector valve. It is just a cast aluminum valve and it's pretty thin. So just be very gentle and just work the hose off. Okay. We'll reach in there and take the Corbin clamp completely off of the hose for now. Those are the two tabs that you'd squeeze in to release the, the hose. Then you'll come over this side. The hose is fitted through a grommet on the back of the control panel. So this is the hose right here. We just pulled it out of the grommet. So included in your kit is going to be a short section of 3 16 hose and a section of quarter inch hose. It's almost six feet long. We're going to cut a one and three quarter inch section of the quarter inch hose. And it doesn't have to be exactly one and three quarters of an inch. close enough right here. This is the output port on the fuel pump. So we're going to take an adapter that goes from 3 16 to quarter inch. We'll push the quarter inch into this piece of quarter inch hose. Is that showing up on the camera good? You can see it clearly? Okay, good. The kit is going to include a bunch of hose clamps. There are two different sizes, and I'll be referring to them as the large one or the small one. So on the quarter inch hose, you'll use the larger hose clamps. On the 3 16 hose, you'll use the smaller ones. So that was a large clamp, and then here's another large clamp. This is the hose that goes to the carburetor, and I'm going to trim the hose right here, so I'm going to take about two and a quarter of an inch, two and a quarter inches off of it. The main reason I'm doing this is I don't want the fuel hose to rub against the sharp edge of the uh, inverter module. So we want the hose to just be a nice, it's about two and a quarter of an inch. And that'll go on to the three sixteenths fitting. So now we'll get a small hose clamp and 
put it on here. I'm facing the clamp portion of the hose clamps inward so that they don't rub the cover or make it any more difficult to put the cover back on. Okay, the kit comes with a fully assembled PCV valve assembly. This is a 5 16 barb coming out of the valve cover. So it is a little bit difficult, but not impossible, to put the hose on. You almost don't even need a clamp once you get the hose on. You'll notice that the hose is just a little bit longer than it needs to be and it's going to be bent into an S bend and it's going to go on to the pulse port and the pulse port will be this port on the fuel pump. Don't accidentally put it onto this one. This is the fuel inlet. I'm going to go ahead and put a hose clamp on this position here. There are enough hose clamps that you can put them in more places if you wanted to. This hose carries air, not gasoline, so I'm not as concerned about it. But since this hose goes onto the engine, which gets hot, I don't want the hose heating up, getting soft, and coming loose. Because then your fuel pump would not work. And remember the original breather hose used to go from the valve cover to the air box. We're going to take and trim the original breather hose and it's going to go from this port on the air box to the new PCV valve. It has a little Corbin clamp with it that was originally on the valve cover end. What we're doing is just trimming the hose up to where it'll be short enough that it'll do what we need to do without interfering in anything else. Okay, so this is your new PCV valve and breather line. Goes from the airbox, you got the PCV valve and the pulse port on the fuel pump. We're going to take the fuel inlet hose, slide it onto the fuel pump. You want to make sure and get it all the way on the hose barb. And since this hose carries gasoline, we're going to put a hose clamp on it. Then we're going to take this hose and we're going to route it over to the other side of the generator. The only reason why we're doing it this way is I want the fuel inlet hose to have a filter on it and you've got a hatch right here on the side of the generator that you can drain and fill your oil from so it's an easy inspection plug so I want the fuel filter to lay right here where it's clearly visible so all you do is unsnap 
the oil fill door and you can see if your fuel filter has water in it or is clogged up with debris or anything like that. So that's why the fuel hose is going to come all the way over here, then down, and then back up to the fuel inlet port. Okay. Now we're going to take the section of 3 16 hose that was included in the kit, and we're going to slide it onto the fuel selector valve where we removed the other section of 3 16 hose from. Again, this hose is carrying gasoline, so we're going to take one of the small hose clamps, because this is 3 16 hose. Can you see that clearly? Okay. This hose is going to connect to this one so that your fuel from your remote tank will go in this way. The fuel from the stock tank will go this way. You'll use another uh, 3 16 to quarter inch adapter. And I want this hose to run right just off the end of the starter motor. So looking in here, can you see those hoses? The 3 16 hose is about two inches longer than we need it to be. So we're going to clip it off. And then we're going to put a 3 16 to quarter adapter Another small hose clamp because again this carries gasoline. We're going to cut a section of the quarter inch hose approximately two and a half inches long and put it on to the quarter to three sixteenths adapter and then we'll put a large hose clamp here Check it for length. Okay. This hose, come around to this side and make sure it's nice and smooth. No sharp bends or anything like that. And mark where it's going to tee into. The 3 16 hose. be right here. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to cut it at this location. Then we're going to take a T-fitting which is included in the kit and three more hose clamps.
So now you've got a T-fitting and the other hose that had the 3 16 uh, connected to a quarter inch hose. In fact, let me show you one here. This is a mock-up with the fuel pump, the pulse line. This is the hose that we just put on. This is the T-fitting, and here's our two-inch section of quarter-inch hose. Here's our adapter, and then this is the one that goes on to the back of the fuel selector valve. So now we're going to take this section of quarter-inch hose and slide it on to the T-fitting. I don't know if you'll be able to see it clearly or not. Can you see the T-fitting? And here's the quarter-inch hose. clamps reposition our hose where we want it to be. Come around the other side of the generator and make sure that there's no sharp kinks in the hose. Here's the hose right here. We're going to run it down to right below the starter motor so that you can see it when you open up the uh, oil door. So we'll cut it right here. We'll install the fuel filter at this location. There is an arrow on it. It shows the direction of fuel flow. Obviously it flows from the remote tank to the fuel pump and onto the carburetor. And again, since this hose carries fuel, we're going to put hose clamps on it. So with the fuel filter sitting right here, you'll be able to see it anytime you unsnap the, uh, the oil door. Okay. The fuel inlet fitting is going to be a Yamaha Marine gas connector. 
and that will connect to the hose that's supplied with the kit. I like to install the fuel connectors in such a way that you don't have them sticking out of the side of the generator. It's far easier to put it right here or something like that where it'll stick out of the side of the generator, but you could walk by it and snag your pant leg on it or something like that, or if you're doing construction work and a ladder falls on it and so on. I like to put it in the most difficult place to put it. However, it's protected that way. On this generator, you've got the aluminum handle here, and this plastic cover. I'm going to drill a hole in this plastic cover and insert the fuel fitting in that. Incidentally, if this aluminum handle slides out on you, there's a flat spot milled into it. Just make sure that that flat spot goes into the uh, adjoining tab on the steel frame of the generator. So we're going to drill a hole right here. I'm going to install it with the pins facing up. The pins will just barely stick up above this, but they're not higher than the fuel cap or the, uh, the back flange on it. So this will allow you to snap the fuel hose on and off and yet keep it in a protected area. So I'm going to go around to this side. and just tear off a small piece of foam. There's foam rubber all in here so I can get where I want to be. The safest area is just a little bit up from the center line of this. I use a step drill because it's quick and easy. Just be sure that you don't drill too deep because then the hole will be too big because the step drill gets larger as it goes in. I'm just taking a hand reamer to enlarge the hole just enough where the fuel fitting will go in. Okay. The kit comes with a hose barb which screws on to the fuel fitting and a roll of Teflon tape. And I send you a full roll of it so don't worry if you waste some or mess up. You've got plenty to do it over with. When you wrap the Teflon tape, be very careful that you don't overlap the ends of the threads. By that I mean don't have it covering like this. If you do, when you screw this on, it's going to tear this piece of Teflon loose. Truth be known, that piece of Teflon will get caught in the fuel filter, so you're safe there. But I would rather not have the filter getting clogged up with uh, our mistakes. The whole purpose of the filter is for the debris in the fuel that has a tendency to be there. And you put about three laps onto the uh, fuel fitting. Slide the fuel fitting through the hole and screw the hose barb on from the back side.
and you can either route this forward or at an angle or straight up or whatever you want. I'm thinking that if I pointed it straight up, the fuel hose that comes in may kink where it lays over. So if it's at an angle, then the fuel hose will come out here and it'll be a more radius bend. So now we're going to take the fuel burners. So we just put our filter on. I'm going to run it over here to where it's just in front of this and trim it. Again, because this hose carries gasoline, we're going to put a hose clamp on it. Can you see that clearly? Okay. What I'm doing right now is I want to route that hose in such a way to make sure that the uh, recoil start rope cannot touch it. And right now, it can touch. So. If you need to undo the clamps, just take and twist them sideways. Watch out, I'm going to elbow you when I pull this hose out. Okay. Included in the kit, about a half a dozen zip ties. I'm going to zip tie this hose right to this bracket so that it doesn't move around on me while I'm attempting to get that cover on. Okay.
what I'm doing is just reaching my arm through from this side to feel to make sure that that recoil start rope is nowhere near the hose. And I've got enough room to put these three fingers between the recoil start rope and the uh, wheel line. So that's good. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting the covers back on. The kit is essentially installed. Now it's just a matter of putting the covers on in the opposite order that we took them off. Now what I did is I put all my bolts in separate stacks so that it would be a lot easier for me to put it back together again. So these are the bolts that go across the bottom of the cover. We're going to get them all started and then we'll go back and torque them down. the bolt that had the burr on the end of it. Three Phillips head screws to go in the top. all the three rubber plugs and these are just beauty covers so if you do happen to lose them it's not the end of the world
Then there's two barbs on this gasoline drain or gasoline shield. They just snap into two adjoining holes in the cover. Then if you look, our fuel filter is now clearly visible. So you don't have to unbolt any covers to be able to check your fuel filter. This side again goes on just the opposite of the way it came off. I'm going to stick my hand in there one more time just to make sure that that cover didn't shift. Okay. And again, I've got room to put these three fingers between that fuel hose and the recoil start rope. Again, I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll start the bolts. I won't torque them down until they're all in place. Then I'll go back through and retorque them. These are the chrome screws, the same as on the other side, go into the handle. That is one thing I like about this generator over some of the Chinese generators. This one has a full steel frame on the bottom, a steel frame on the top and then steel uprights connecting the bottom to the top so you're not relying on a plastic housing to hold the whole generator shape. In the front here you can see there are two metal bars that go up to the brackets that hold the aluminum handle which makes it a lot stronger than a lot of the older uh, Chinese generators. three screws go into the top right below the rubber covers. Then we'll put the back panel on. The back panel has three tabs, so it's actually easier to slide the top in first and then roll the bottom into place.
got the two screws that go in from the top that had the rubber plugs above them. rubber plugs back in place. These rubber plugs are angled on top to follow the contours of the generator housing. And the front is just like the rear, you have little tabs on the front top surface. There's a decal that comes in the kit that explains the operation of the remote tank versus the operation of the stock tank. And incidentally, you can use the stock tank with my kit installed. Uh, I'll cover over that when I shoot the demo video of how everything operates. But if you do call me up to ask questions, please do not make that the first question you ask is, can I use the stock tank? Yes, you can. I just want to pick a, a nice spot where this is easily visible. I don't want it to be on the opposite side of the generator because unfortunately that's the way the gas shield is. So if they spill gas filling the top of it, it's going to run down the other side. So I'm going to put the decal right here. As I stated earlier, these four screws are the only Phillips head screws that are different. All the other Phillips head screws are identical, which will make it easier for you when you go to put it together. Thank <laughs> you. 
the other two important parts are the kit also comes with a fuel fitting that you'll screw into the top of your remote fuel tank and it comes with a genuine Yamaha fuel hose approximately nine feet long they've actually got it in meters not that that matters okay so this completes the install if you have any questions about this there is a link at the bottom of this video to my website so you can contact me there or if you're already on my website then you've already got my phone number and my email address but uh, that should cover it thanks for watching